Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to our favorite time of the week where we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. We've got some cool stuff for Christmas as well. Let's check it out. All right, I mentioned the holidays there right at the beginning. That's because we've got two new knives from Boker this week, freshly landed, that I think are really good, uh, gonna make really good gifts this year. And they're not too expensive either. So you're not gonna have to stretch too far. And the first is a new pair of exclusives. This is the Cataclyst. Formerly much more expensive knife than they are now. This was about $112 for a titanium handled D2 knife. Now with this North American exclusive for us here at the Knife Center, 45 bucks for this particular variant. You've got Earth Brown G10 handles and a steel frame lock on the back. Now, if you have bigger thumbs like me, it might be a little, just a tiny bit finicky to uh, disengage that lock rather than give you a, uh, a cutout here on the front scale to make it a little easier. For me, I have to get my kind of thumb tip in there and it works pretty well at that point. Deep carry pocket clip, really nice. And as you can see in that folded up state, gonna be very unobtrusive, very slim. Well, not so much slim, but very narrow in the pocket. So it's not gonna take up a ton of real estate. Ball bearings in the pivot, nice flipping action. Three inch blade or just under that three inch mark, 440C stainless steel here in a black or a satin finish. Nice little shape. You've got that very acute tip, not the sliciest profile in the world, but you've got a little bit more width to the blade, a little bit more strength there. Really nice crowned spine on this as well, and some jimping that gives you traction without feeling sharp. Really cool little knives, especially, like I said, for that $45 price point. Gonna be a really good option this year. The next Boker comes in a good bit more inexpensive even than that and brings it down into potential stocking stuffer range. 18 bucks, this is the leg, L apostrophe egg, like French, like the egg. Leg. Leg. Um, not like legs, like human legs, like the egg. Um, Even though it's oof. That's enough from you. Three people just got that in the comments. <laughs> uh, John Kubasek design right here, who of course does the uh, credit card knives for Boker. Another good small knife design from him. Kind of a pendant shape in the closed up position. Uh, and that closing action, which you saw me just do, is kind of the kind of special thing with this. There's no lock on this knife, but it folds out radially like so and is held in the closed position by a pair of magnets. So I guess probably if you're wearing a pacemaker, you probably wouldn't want. We're not doctors. Yeah, not a doctor. Um, also, maybe I should keep it away from the hasn't, microphone. Hasn't bugged us yet. Okay. So far. Okay, fine. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Uh, but anyway. That's why we bought the cheap <laughs> The cool thing about this opening method is you heard that snap there when it opens, that magnet holds it in the open position too. This blade does not fold closed. Like I'm I'm putting a decent bit of pressure there on the spine while being careful not to like poke myself. Gonna be a fairly safe lot or safe knife for a non-locking design. So for especially some of the, uh, the European customers we have out there where you can have, or, or locking knives can create a little bit of a uh, kind of legal headache. This could be a really good option for you without sacrificing the safety where you have to worry about the edge itself closing on your fingers. And it feels really secure. I mean, I've, I can put a lot of pressure on these handles. It doesn't feel like it's gonna slip or rotate open on me. Really nice, let's see. I have to even think about which way it needs to close to do it. Really cool. Uh, the blade itself, about one and a half inches, D2 steel, hollow grind. Obviously it's not gonna be, or it's not gonna be everything you want if you need like a larger knife, even something like that Cataclyst with a three inch blade. This is just a good smaller utility blade that could flex into some primary EDC if you couldn't have a lock on your blade. Also a good backup, fit really nicely in that fifth jeans pocket as well. All right, next up, we're back to an exclusive again, and also just talking about the Hogue Decca in general. The Gen 2 Hogue Decca's 
have officially landed for the most part. Uh, let me explain. Um, it's the same part number essentially as the old versions. It's the Gen 2 improvements on this knife are sort of an inline change. And we're working to make sure all our photographs are updated on our website. But if you go there and you see the old versions, rest assured it is a Gen 2 at this point, except for our exclusive Warncliffe bladed versions. We haven't gotten a new batch of the Gen 2s yet, but our clip point bladed versions are now the Gen 2 DECAs. If you're unfamiliar with the DECA and unfamiliar with the Gen 2 changes specifically, uh, they kind of debuted the very first of these uh, at Blade Show last year, and we were able to get a preview of that. We'll leave a link to our, uh, our Hogue Blade Show video up there. They kind of changed two things that people weren't so keen about. The first and foremost, we've now got a deep carry pocket clip on this guy. Very nice to see that direct from the factory. It is reversible as well. Works really nicely, and especially when you have something like an ambidextrous lock, like the Able lock here. Good to have that uh, ambidextrous capability on the pocket clip as well. Blade steel, still the same 20 CV, stone washed or black coated, and the various G10 colors. This is the red G Mascus version on our Knife Center exclusive. The other thing they did, and again, this especially helps when you have a very busy handle material like this, is they've cleaned up the kind of screw count uh, of this versus old versions. Uh, the previous versions had a couple of extra screws. I think there's like a total of six fewer screws on this version versus the old version. So you'd have fewer screw heads to kind of mess with the aesthetic lines. And they even got rid of the, uh, the tiny little plate that sat on the front side to block out the reversible pocket clip screws, which some people like, but definitely added to the visual, you know, assault, so to speak. Clutter. Clutter. We'll go with that. Still love these knives. They're just even a little bit better now than they were before. And if you place an order for anything except for our exclusive Warren Clips, you're going to be getting a Gen 2 at this point. Very, very cool. Uh, 140 bucks ish, 21 cents, uh, for the standard versions, about eight or nine bucks more for the black coated versions. All right, next up, we've got another ambidextrous crossbar locking knife to show you this week. Uh, it's a new James brand. This is the Redstone and a bit of an unusual looking knife. I got to admit, uh, they come in about 89 bucks. We've got a two and a half inch blade, 12 C 27 stainless from Sandvik. Uh, and all of them are this drop point shape with the almost full flat grind and the partial serrations. Uh, not all of them are coated. You can get a satin blade as well. They're all the same price. However, the handles, however, clearly are the news or the <laughs> something interesting on this four piece handles, basically. Speaking of visual clutter, something James, the James Brown has always been really good at. No real uh, screws to worry about here from the outside to kind of clutter things up. But injection molded, you've got four pieces, two on each side. It creates a nice pinch point here in front gives you a little bit of extra grip, especially, you know, the way my hand sits here naturally, you've got a lot of handle length, but it doesn't really feel right to me with you, when you've got all four fingers on there. Yeah, if you're pushing it through a cut, that'll work. But instead, this section here feels a bit more like a finger guard to me. And my index finger wants to sit there very naturally. I can pinch really naturally thanks to that depression created or the space between the two pieces of scales and put that blade to work. Kind of an interesting take on a handle. And we've seen a few other similar things from some other folks in the pike. We'll see if this might be a trend or something this, ne this next coming year. Uh, the other thing that you don't notice right away, that's even more interesting to me, at least, is you've got a folded steel frame here. It's essentially an integral frame. It's not milled integral, but it is a folded piece of metal there which is really nice. You don't have to worry about extra screws for backspacers or, or standoffs or anything. One less thing that you don't have to worry about coming loose and you've got a nice stable platform for the rest of the knife. Pretty cool. Uh, pocket clip, not reversible in this case, but it is deep carry with this nice wire look. You got a fob there that you could of course take off, take off if you don't like. And you've got that ambidextrous lock. You can do the flick closed and open. It's a little bit harder on this one because there's not a lot of mass to the blade. Maybe this will wear in a little more over time. Don't have any experience with it uh, myself. So we couldn't say because it is a brand new lock after a brand new knife after all, but it folds up 
really nice. You got your finger guard or finger hole there right in that little trough. Very interesting design. All right, next up from Artisan Cutlery, we've got a new Ray Laconico design and that is the Sirius. Um, three tiers to this knife, essentially. The base tier comes in about 70 bucks. With that, you've got a three and a half inch blade of RPM9 powder metallurgy steel. You've got a thumb stud, you've got G10 handles and an inset liner lock. But more than just what you can see when it's open, when it's closed there, you can see you've also got a front flipper. And it's a sleeker shape, but you can definitely see the Ray Laconico in this design, especially if you've been following the other artisan cutlery designs from Ray Laconico, such as the Centauri. There's definitely a bit of family resemblance here going on. Milled pocket clip on this guy, lanyard point there at the back. Pretty compelling at that $70 price point. You can get it, uh, I think a couple different G10 colors, or it might just be black at this point, but you can get black or satin blades. That's the, uh, the, the intro tier. The step up tier comes in about 128. It trades the Micarta, or the G10 for Micarta, and it trades up to S35 VN steel, but it still has the thumb stud and the front flipper. And the highest end tier jumps up to about 200. And for that, specs here are really nice for the price. You've got full titanium handles, S35 VN steel again, and no thumb stud on this guy though. They kind of cleaned up the visual profile and cleaned up the handle. You can see you don't have to worry about that cutout there. And the other thing you get as well, frame lock, as opposed to the inset liner lock. Much more gentlemanly than any of the other versions, especially with a nice sleek profile when opened like this. Very nicely put together and very nicely priced compared to the competition. All right, next up, we've got three new uh, variants from Giant Mouse. Uh, this first is a new Ace Clyde, three inch blade, 175 bucks. You've got L-Max steel with that upswept profile, nice stonewash finish, nice crown spine, uh, because I believe these are made in Italy and if there's any spines hanging around, they can't help but, but crown them. It's, it's just what they do. Gotta love them for it though. Micarta handles, like I mentioned, inset liner lock here, brass backspacer. Uh, I believe this is an actual piece of brass too. I don't think it's anodized. Uh, and that wire pocket clip on the back side. Right side, tip up only folds up, that blade nestles in quite nicely. You've got ball bearings in the pivot and that nice thumb stud for opening. Really cool shape for this guy. Next up, we have the version two or the V2 Nimbus from Giant Mouse, uh, which if I didn't mention already, Giant Mouse, of course, as a brand, as a whole, is a collaboration between uh, Jens Anso and Jesper Vaknes. So you've got their design language all over these guys. Uh, three inch blade again, L-Max Steel, 185 on these guys. Chunkier handles in this case. You've got Micarta that's a little bit thicker and contoured around. So you've got a fairly hand filling grip on this guy. Still got a bit of upsweep to the blade, but I'd say this is technically a drop point. I mean, eh, well, let's see here. Yeah, 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 drop point. Uh, it almost looked like we might have a straight spine going on, but yeah, you do have a little bit of drop here in front of that leading edge of jimping. Which is a pretty cool feature, by the way. Deep carry pocket clip or a wire pocket clip, which is reversible. Liner lock is not inset in this case, but you've got a little bit thicker steel liners and no flipper tab here. A little bit more of a deliberate opener. If you have really narrow fingers, you might be able to get in there and do the middle finger flick, but access from the front side for just thumb opening is a little bit better for me. And then finally, another Giant Mouse, new Ace Biblio with natural Micarta handles here. Although I think we have green also. Uh, anyway, also 185, three inch blade, just under that three inch mark, I should say, and 390 steel on this guy. Still got that stonewashed finish, still got that tall, flat grind going on. You've got that chunkier feel in the hand, although if you want a fuller grip, you're gonna have to choke up into that choil area a little bit as opposed to that Nimbus. I can get all four of my slightly larger than average handed fingers on that particular guy without a choke up area. Uh, ball bearings again, liner lock again, flipper tab in this case though. So if that's your thing, this is definitely the thing to look at. 
Also a really nice thing if you've been looking for a more premium upgrade to something like the CRKT Pilar series. Same great design language with this knife right here. All right, if it seems like I was kind of rushing through those last few, it's because I've got a lot of fixed blades this week. You guys know I like my fixed blades. And I was just excited to get to them. But sticking with Italy here for a minute, we've got the M2M, which is the newest iterations of the M2 series. Uh, this is a series of cool drop point knives, several different handle options. You've got your Micartas and you've got olive wood and this Santos, which is a uh, relative of mahogany wood right here option, which I think looks really cool. Just for a, a little bit over 150 bucks for all of these guys. Really nice, more slightly more compact hunting slash small survival knife, perhaps uh, 3.54 inches of blade steel in front of the handles there. M390 with this wide drop point and that full flat grind, you're going to get a pretty good slicing geometry while still being able to maintain a little bit of thickness behind the spine. So you can have a bit of strength. This is not going to be a, a super dainty knife, but it doesn't feel super chunky either. It's got a nice weight to it. Uh, without the sheath, just under five ounces. It's not bad at all, especially with this, uh, these, these uh, wood handle scales. Micarta might be a little bit heavier. Man, it feels good, you guys. They've always done a, such a good job with their handle shapes. Uh, if you've got really big hands, the length might not quite be enough for you. I've got just enough length here for all four of my fingers, no problem. And the contoured shape fills things up really nicely. It's so good in the hand. A little bit of protruding tang here at the back, and you can use that for some striking if you need to in like a survival or a outdoor situation. You've also got a section here of crisp steel, crisp edges on here, which will allow you to scrape something like a fire steel with this knife without having to worry about you know using your edge. That's kind of one of the uh, quote unquote downsides of some of the lion steel fixed blades is for a bushcrafter specifically, I should say, is you don't have a crisp spine. They go for that crown spine for comfort, but they add that functionality back in here to the tail so you don't miss out on that, which is pretty nice. Uh, the sheath itself is pretty darn nice too. And you've got a couple of carry options built in. As you can see, the leather is really nicely executed and you can carry it horizontally like so, thanks to these extra loops right here, or you can carry it in standard belt carry. You can pass your belt through there if you want a horizontal or a uh, vertical carry instead. Really cool to have the, uh, the two options in a single leather sheath. Usually if you want both options, you have to resort to something like Kydex. Pretty cool. Next one, however, I think it's kind of even bigger news because we have a full tang Micarta handled F1 from Felkneven. Uh, and this is the uh, the classic F1 shape. It's not the uh, the F1X full tang knives that they unveiled. Was it last year? 2020 might have been. How am I supposed to remember? Yeah, you you got no chance. If I can't remember something about a fixed blade, there's no way Thomas is remembering. Nope. But man, you you don't see these Micarta handled F1s often at all. In fact, it, I think it's been a really long time since there's been a new factory version out there. Uh, this is a more premium uh, special edition knife. Uh, it comes in about 485 bucks. Um, so if you're looking for a user, this might not be the most budget friendly version for something like that, but I do love it. Uh, three point or just under a four inch blade. You've got a laminated 3G blade in this case. They're, uh, they're powder metallurgy premium option in the lineup. Really good stuff. You got that full convex grind with no secondary edge. It comes right down that apple seed just very sharp point right there. And maroon micarta, linen micarta for the handles. Again, another knife that has handles that are shaped really nicely. Check out that hourglass figure from the top. Not hourglass, but you know what I mean. Man, it feels good. Uh, special edition, like I said, you can see here right on the front, uh, JAS 39 Gripen Next Generation. I can read upside down, did you know? Um, the Gripen, of course, is a Saab fighter aircraft. Saab, the Swedish company, Felikneven, the Swedish company, and the F1 is the official survival knife of the Swedish Air Force. So that is the kind of tie-in uh, for this particular model right here. Uh, you could use it, like I said, maybe you're not into collecting it, but you really love the look and you love that design and that Micarta handle. You do have a nice leather sheath for carry. Snap flap over the top, 
traditional belt loop on the back. It's just really cool, you guys. Could be a premium hunting knife for sure. Definitely a, a smaller survival knife option. And yes, it's pricey, but if you're in the budget or in the market for something with that kind of price for someone, it's gonna be a really good option too. It comes with a really nice wooden box here. And a nice padded interior. Is that velour? I don't know what that is, but it's really cool. Um, we got another cool box to look at here in a minute. Ah, oh, fixed blades, guys. Gotta love them. Uh, next up, a couple new fixed blades from Dragonfly Blade Works. Actually, we've got a handful of each of these patterns uh, in right now. I picked two of my favorites from each. Uh, the first, this is the Mizuchi. Comes in, this particular one, about 275 bucks. Just over five inches in blade length, kind of a modified, it's like an upswept sheep's foot with a constant belly going on. It's kind of hard to classify the blade shape. And then we've got, in this case, a nice olive drab, or what do they call it? Olive green heavy weave burlap. Always love burlap on a working knife. It has a nice feel in the hand. And this truly is a working style knife. You've got this aggressive shape that you can pull off some of the slicing stuff, but it feels like it's just gonna be fantastic at some of those more powerful cuts. Uh, 8670 carbon steel on this one, saber height flat grind. So you've got more rigidity there than something with a full flat. And because of this shape, you do have a bit of knuckle clearance here too. Maybe a bit of food prep, might be a little chunky for some of that stuff, but it's still gonna be really good for working on a surface. If you're doing some kind of heavier craft project or heavier work project where you need that knuckle clearance, it's gonna work, but you get that while still having a nice amount of slicing belly essentially going on. Very cool. Uh, no sheaths included with these dragonflies, so keep that in mind. The next one is one of his Spitfire designs, which fantastic EDC fixed blade in my mind. This one right here, about 290, with a nice crimson red dyed camel bone handle. Really, really attractive going on. A couple of uh, white pinstripes and natural micarta liners there on the top side, natural micarta pins as well. Uh, A2 on this particular steel. Higher flat grind and thinner blade steel means this is gonna be a little bit slicier, of course, just under three inches on that blade. And one of the more comfortable handles I've ever felt on a knife. Just, that's the story with the fixed blades this week, especially, super, super comfy. All right, now we've got some kitchen fixed blades or just kitchen knives as a normal person might call it. Um, new series here from Wustoff. This is the Performer series, and you've got all the basics uh, are covered in terms of the blade shapes uh, and knife styles for your kitchen set. Of course, I pulled the eight inch chef knife to show you guys, 350 bucks on these guys. And blade shape and the, uh, the bolstered kind of French or uh, Western style chef knife is intact, it looks like any other uh, Wusthof from just an outline, but as you can see, the handle itself is different and the whole finish itself is very different too. We've actually got a DLC coating on the blade, giving it that much more durability than just the standard stainless steel versions. And you get to see some cool stuff engraved there on the back, just to kind of spice things up a little bit. Balance on them is pretty good. Actually just about perfectly neutral in that pinch grip here, right in front of the handles. Handles, of course, not the triple riveted black, uh, black plastic that you may be used to. It's got a honeycomb texture molded over the tang of this knife. So it is still a synthetic handle, but one of the nice things about, you know, an injection style molded handle like this is again, really nice contoured shape for comfort going on. It's not just a couple of slabs bolted on to the side of a knife blade. Feels really good, you guys, I'm saying. <laughs> um, but it's a Wusthof. All the quality you, you know and expect from a blade like this is right here. This is a genuine Zollingen Germany made Wusthof knife. Pretty darn cool. Uh, and if that's a little bit outside your budget, but you wanna check out the series, like I said, you've got pairing knives, bread knives, uh, the whole nine yards. So you can go to, get by in this series with a lot less money. This next guy is not gonna not cost you a lot of money if you're interested in, but I am pretty darn smitten with this right here. 
Uh, there's a couple of these. We've got a Santoku and a, a standard chef knife pattern. Limited editions from Shun. Pricey, 600 bucks for these guys right here. But in terms of a production kitchen knife, I'm not sure I've seen anything cooler. I just, I really like this. Uh, and that's, you know, personal preference showing, sure. But check it out, man, super cool. Uh, I'll get to the blade in a minute, but just the handles. You've got two different colors of uh, stabilized pack of wood material, a black ring near the bolster, and a really cool blue on the main handle section. And there's a shimmer to it, a chatoyance that just feels really, really appealing to my eye. Nice shape too, and unlike some of the Shun knives, this is not a, actually is it? Yeah, no, thought I was, but I had to make sure. It's not a right or left hand biased handle. This is a symmetrical handle going on, which is really cool. So if they're gonna make a limited edition, at least they make a handle shape that most people can use. Might as well. That's pretty good. Left-handers have money too. It's true, it's true, and we see you guys out there. We really do. But check out the blades, man. Just check out the patterning going on there, this kind of dual look going on. So that patterning itself is not just, it's not something that's like lasered on there or anything like that. This is actually folded and forged into this pattern. Uh, and you've got alternating layers of VG10 and VG2 steel on this. And the reason they, they say there's, a, there's an actual performance reason to do something like this. Um, and I'll, I'll just kind of read to you what they say because Kind of a new concept or, or new execution of something like that to me. Uh, but they say here in the center, it's a little better for finer slicing and then the pattern gives you a little bit better food release above it. The heel back here is designed for a little more strength and you've got a little more precision there near the tip. That's what they're saying anyway. I think in use, it's probably just gonna behave like any normal blade, you probably, un unless you're like 99.99th percentile of being able to feel things, it's just gonna feel great. It's gonna feel really good, but it's probably gonna feel just about the same, but it's gonna look really, really awesome. I, I'll admit it, I'm a little bit smitten with it. Uh, and if you're talking about a gifty option right now for you know something very premium, nice box included with this guy as well. You've got your uh, printed materials there embedded in the front, nice padded so you can keep it there if you're worried about putting it up on a knife block or magnet and someone coming along and messing with it or not treating it well, you can protect it in that guy. I don't know what to say, man. It's probably really good with cheese. Oh, you and your cheese knife fetish, I swear. It, useful. it would be really good at cheese though. Yeah. Yeah, super awesome. And you've got the chef knife too. Uh, we don't have a super, super heck of a lot of them because they have not made a lot of them either. So if it's in your budget, I highly recommend it. Definitely. All right. That is all the time I've got for today. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, there will be links in the description to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program as well, because if you're going to spend your money on one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.